Hey everybody, John Finn, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I.org. We are a house church network. I just want to say house church should be something that is healthy and safe and balanced. And generally, the folks from house church come in from family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, somebody that somebody knows. And so people get to know one another. And if there's somebody that comes in that or wants to come that is not part of the, uh, the known group, uh, it's okay to take them to lunch or breakfast or have a coffee with them or something and just get to know them to make sure the house church is right for them. Some people like the anonymity of an auditorium where they can sit at the back and be left alone, whereas house church is coming to someone's home and being a guest in that home and facing one another in a small group. So uh, it's it's all right to figure things out and to, to just make sure that, that things are right and healthy and balanced. So just want to give that tip today. Visit our website, cwowi.org. All right, talking today more about uh, heaven a little bit. Last week I shared about not only my son, Chris, who is uh, had the umbilical cord around his neck in a slipknot and caused brain damage. And so Chris uh, is mentally around four years old or so, even though he's a, an adult in his 40s today as I'm, as I'm uh, uh, recording this. And he's the most outgoing, loving person you could ever hope to meet. He is known far and wide in this area by every clerk, waiter, waitress, etc. cetera. Um, because he's so outgoing, he's never met a stranger he didn't like. And I shared last week also about Will, a deaf mute, that uh, I had gotten to know and that I had seen at one point the, the father talking to him. And one of the things I shared last week was talking about how the father said, my son, I appreciate your hard work. And in the age to come, you'll find you will be a teacher of many. Many will come and sit at your feet and learn of you. Now that element there that a, a, a man in earth today who is deaf and unable to speak would in heaven or in the age to come become a teacher of many brings out elements of of heaven and brings out elements of the next age that that i want to share today a lot of times people think you know heaven is is uh you know just leisure time or something like that and 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 while that certainly is part of it but the greater part of the greatest impression i have and uh, that i've shared and and let me say this i've i've shared my story uh, on different interviews that you can find on YouTube, like Deep Believer with uh, Jennifer Bagnashi and the Randy K, that is K-A-Y, the Randy K Show, and others where I've shared uh, what I've seen in heaven, how the Lord has taken me there and everything. But one of the elements of it is the idea of, and that took me by surprise, is reconciliation. The things that go on in heaven between individuals are not just like, oh, suddenly everything is rosy and kind and, and happy about everything that happened in life. One of the things that caught me by surprise was people talking things out, things that had happened on earth between them, and they were talking them out. Now, the, the wonderful thing about in heaven, talking through uh, events that had happened on earth, is that there's, there's no devil, there's no uh, flesh, that one would become offended or want to get in a, a, a sarcastic or, or mean mar remark or something of that nature. And because it's heaven, the Holy Spirit 100% accurately communicates what one person is saying from the other and also accurately gives them the complete understanding of what that person is saying. So there's no possibility of misunderstanding. There's no possibility of hurt feelings. And people don't realize, you know, um, when it says about in the book of Revelation about how the Father God will wipe away their tears, uh, you know, we, when, when a person's in heaven, they don't get rid of their emotions or that part of their emotions. You know, for instance, in, uh, in Revelation chapter 4, the apostle John is caught up into heaven. It talks about how he was, uh, in, in Revelation 4, 2, it says he, he saw a door, in 1 and 2, it says he saw a door open in heaven, and he heard a voice saying, come up here. And he said, immediately I was in the Spirit, and before me was a throne in heaven. Well, that throne in the Revelation chapter 4 is the Father God. And the Apostle John is in the Spirit, and in the Spirit you can, you can see the Father God, just like Exodus 33 talks about how the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When you're in the Spirit, you can, you can see the Father God. 
He was seen by Daniel in Daniel 7 as the Ancient of Days, to whom the Son of Man came and received a kingdom without end. He was seen by Ezekiel, by Moses, 74 of the elders of Israel in, in Exodus 24, uh, verses 7 through 11. But anyway, so the Apostle John is caught up in heaven. He sees the Father God, clear flooring around the throne, rainbow over the throne, cherubs all around singing, holy, holy, holy. Uh, he saw 24 elders. And in chapter 5, it says, and, and he says the Father God was holding a scroll in his hand. And it says that he wept much because no one was worthy to open the scroll. And then he saw the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who had been slain, and he was found worthy to open the book. And in Revelation chapter 5 and verses 5 through 7 says that he came, the lamb who had been slain, he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. And when he'd opened the book and opened the, broke the seals thereof, and it talks about how everyone cried out with before him, you know, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. So the point is that the Apostle John was weeping much in heaven. Uh, in, in Revelation chapter 6, with the fifth seal in verses 9 through 11, I believe it is, there's a multitude of people who have died for their faith. They were murdered for being Christians. And they are before the throne of the Father God, and they cry out, and they say, How long, O Lord, until you avenge us uh, and bring vengeance for our, for our murders, for our deaths? And they were given robes of righteousness and told it's going to be a little bit longer yet. So there they have, they have the full emotion that they were murdered and they're bringing their case before the Father God and say, how long until you bring vengeance for our death? They remember how they were, how they were killed. They remember their life before. Also remember that Jesus, uh, when at his resurrection, he came back, he had full remembrance of everything that happened. And he said, remember not when I was with you, I told you these things. And he started sharing with them from Moses and the prophets, from, from Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets, uh, about his his death and his burial and resurrection. And so, you know, in heaven, you don't become a robot. You don't lose your emotions. And one case in particular where uh, in this I saw well, several different things, but I'll, I, I commonly share this one instance where um, I saw this, this man uh, who had um, died unexpectedly of a heart attack. But he was in heaven. He was talking with a man that I just knew by the Spirit was his father. And they were walking along and I asked the angel that was, you know, the angel there. I said, so what are they talking about? And he said, well, it's none of your business, but I can tell you that they're talking about something that happened between them when he was 17 years old and ended up leaving the house, a fight that they had between them that when he was 17 and he ended up leaving the house. And so there was a father and son talking about things that happened. I mean, the man, when he died, was in his 60s. And I don't know anything about the, the dad or anything else, but I know that the man was in his 60s when he died. And here they are in heaven, father and son, talking about things that happened when the, when the son was a teenager. Amazing things. I, I go back to, to Will being a teacher in heaven. I, I'll, I'll share a little bit from my own life. I, um, um, it was earlier this year, actually. I was feeling pretty tired and overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> our son Chris it, it was at home for the first 24 years of his life but after his little brothers went off to school we realized how much they had helped with their big brother and we realized we needed to put Chris in a group home and I've shared about that in this space the toughest decision Barbara and I have ever made in our lives and um, and then we soon moved to be close to him within a half an hour of him so that we could pick him up on Fridays. Uh, usually when I'm not traveling, I pick him up on Friday mornings and then return him to the group home on Saturday afternoons. So we run errands on Friday and that's where Chris knows everybody at the stores and stuff like that because he loves rolling around his wheelchair and, and talking to everybody. Um, but it's, a, it's a, a load on me. I mean, just honestly, to to oversee this ministry with, with dozens of house churches around the world the output of teaching and, and sharing that I do here on a weekly basis, my weekly thoughts, which is an email you can sign up for, uh, a teaching usually not about house church at all, uh, that comes out every Friday by email, monthly newsletters, different things of that nature. And so I was like, Father, you know, I've got all this burden. How do you, yeah, it sounds like a reoccurring thing. You know, how do you expect me to do this? And then this day, it was the added burden. It's just like, Father... I long to see my son as an adult. And I know that in heaven, 
this life is going to seem like a vapor, like a mist that disappears in the morning sun, like a breath on a cold winter's day. It's going to disappear in a moment of time. But I long for that. I long to know, you know, Chris as, as an adult. You know, this came at a time where Chris and I were kind of driving along and he was listening to one of his songs on the playlist. I've got, I've got songs, you know, I've got Salty, the singing songbook, P-S-A-L-T-Y, Salty Psalms. Uh, the Donut Man, another Christian kids thing, and and Veggie Tales, and all of these things, and I've heard it over and over and over for forty years. But with Chris, because of brain damage, everyone is almost like it's hearing it for the first time. He he shows much the same enthusiasm for his songs that that he did, you know, thirty years ago. And I was just saying, Father, I long to have that that adult relationship with my son. And suddenly, this is as I was driving, there was just this scene before me. And my eyes are wide open and I'm driving along. It's country road. I'm going slow. and But I see this, this, this scene and it's like in a, a, like a TV screen in, in the air in front of me. And I'm standing there and, and Chris is seated here to my right side. And so I'm looking down like at the side of his face and the, the top of his head. And there are people sitting on the ground all around him. He's like seated, seated on a rock. Uh, and, and there are people sitting all around listening to him. And it, I noticed his head was bigger. His head was like more normal size. And it's a little smaller now because of the brain damage and everything. And he was handsome and he had, he still got his mom's dark hair. And, you know, and, and just sitting, just, I was just standing there like an observer. And he was going on talking. And I said, Father, what am I seeing? And he's seeing your, he said, you're seeing Chris in heaven. And I said, well, what's he doing? And he said, he's telling others about what it was like to be trapped in a handicapped body on earth. And he's telling, uh, and, and it's interesting because I recognize, I could see like blurred faces, but I knew by the spirit that some of the people who were listening to him had been his caregivers at the group home. You know, he's been in, at this rate, he's been in the group home about 20 years. And so they've had a parade of, of employees, you know, and staff that's come through. So I don't know anyone in particular. I just recognized by the spirit that some of those people sitting there listening to him had been staff members who had cared for him. And, you know, when the father said he's sharing what it's like to have been trapped in a handicapped body on, on the earth and, and talking about incidents in his life and different events in his life and what he wanted to say and what he wanted communicated and what was misunderstood and how, how and talk about my graciousness to him. And all these things, I was just amazed, and it comforted my heart so much to know that 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 one day, uh, not only Chris, but like I shared about Will, um, you know, the deaf mute from last week, that he's going to be a teacher of many. I, I don't know what, if he's going to teach, if he's going to be from his his perspective, or if it's going to be from Scripture, I don't know. But I, I look at, at people, I look at reconciliation, I look at, at heaven, the next age, is that that... People will have their stories to tell. They will have incidents in their lives that they'll have to work through and talk through. But it's not a fear thing. It's not a confrontational thing. People will be able to, to, to share their stories. We'll get to know one another in, in purity, in holiness, in godliness. I, again, there's no devil. You're not in a, a flesh of this earth building, so there's uh, this earth construction, so there's no chance of, of a, a snide comment or sarcasm or something like that. You're, you're, the Holy Spirit provides revelation of what you're trying to say to the person who's listening to it, and they have revelation from the Holy Spirit on exactly what is being communicated. And that's what I saw. That was one of the biggest things that surprised me in heaven is people talking through their lives and getting to know one another and people talking about their lives from, from centuries past and generations past. Uh, because if you think about it, it took lots, it took millions of people to create you, to come to the point that you were conceived and came into this world. You know, just the, the numbers of people that it took with their lives and the decision and God's hand in all of it through the centuries and people get to tell their stories. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of bring closure to, from last week to this week and just share that little bit about, about from my life and the things that I'm looking forward to, and just that little element of heaven. There's so much more. Anyway, John Finn, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. Hope it's been a blessing. Bye-bye.